Hello all, back again with you with another video. Um, I'm here at Peachtree in between lessons and you may hear a little bit of background noise. I apologize for that, but it's a warm day. I just, if you can see my face is kind of flush. I just got back from a brisk walk and uh, I decided, you know, I've been working on some stuff that uh, I wanted to share with you guys. So let's get right on into it. These are two various licks, one of which at least was inspired by Mike Riddle of the Primitive Quartet. Wonderful, awesome guitar player, well known for his harmonies and his uh, scalar type melodies, uh, runs and things that he does uh, on the fretboard. And it's funny because uh, this is based, uh, a few licks based on a song that I had to kind of fill in the gaps for, uh, for the Gilbert family. We're about to come out with a new album. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be ready by the time this album is released. But we're, I mean, this uh, video is released, but we are about to release a new album called The Promise. And you can find out more information about that by going to www.thegilbertfam.com. Thegilbertfam.com. They also have a fa Facebook page that you can check out on Facebook if you uh, look for The Gilbert Family from Sparta, Tennessee. Okay, so this song is called Sailing for Home. And I'm going to play you just a couple of bits from it of some licks that I did on the album that I had totally forgotten how I'd done. And the other night at practice, I had to work one of them out, and today I had to work the other one out because I, I couldn't even remember how I did it. It was kind of a spur-of-the-moment, happy accident type of thing while in the studio. So I'll let you listen to the first one. And what's funny about this is that while we were in the studio, um, Sandy, the, the lead singer, uh, was talking about how you know to make it sound like the primitive quartet, like Mike Riddle, and I said, okay, I've got to channel my inner Mike Riddle. So I thought that was a little funny part about that. And this lick, to me, says Mike Riddle all over it. Uh, and so we'll listen to that. And this is part of Sailing for Home. Now, it's going to come up pretty abruptly. So I'm going to back it up just a little bit and let you listen to it. I'm going to be playing this on iTunes and see. And I'll, I'll point whenever it's about to come up. And she told me love a Savior. Chart my destiny. Well, now the misty. Okay, so let me back that up again in case the background noise, the cars was in the way. So listen to that one more time. My destiny. Well, now the misty veil. Okay, so that's the first lick. All right, now the lick actually is sounds like this. So when I was in practice the other day, trying to practice this song with uh, the Gilbert family, trying to get all these songs ready for playing them live, um, I had the hardest time trying to get that lick. We're up here, try to chart my destiny. Okay, so I thought, well, I could use the open, open G string to get back. But it still sounds, it cuts everything off. And Faith, the manual player, is the only one playing any kind of um, the chords or any kind of melody, chop, chopping or anything on her mandolin. Uh, the dobro you hear is Josh Swift, uh, Dole Lawson's dobro player, playing dobro for us. He's actually the engineer that we went to to uh, get the album recorded and produced. Fantastic job. I can't wait to it comes out. Um, but we'll see here that it's hard to get from here to here and then get right back. It just it kills the sound. There's no open strings. It's all closed stuff. So listen, listen to how the sound kind of dies. See, it's just, it, there's no, anymore. There's none of that stuff happening in there. I can't really do any extra stuff in, in around it. Then I'd be able to come back and all of a sudden you got this closed stuff and then you got this open stuff again. So it, it doesn't sound like it kind of flows together. So right at the end of the practice, I realized by playing around, where else can I play this? And this is a good tip for you guys who are trying to figure out a lick and don't know how in the world you're going to make it sound good. Try to find other places on the guitar to play it. Okay, so it goes to the key of D. And actually, this is an arpeggio, a broken up chord. Of a 
D, way up here. Okay, now, by the way, on capo it's second fret. She sings a song in A. So not only is it tough to get to, I barely have enough room to get there, and if I had, didn't have a cutaway, it would be even tougher. So I thought, well, let's find another place to put this lick here. And like I said, at the end of the practice uh, last night, depending on when you get this, it was on a uh, Thursday night. At the end, I figured out another way to do this. So we're in the key of D. So since this is D as well, let's see if we can find that up here, where it's closer to some upper strings and where we can actually get away with some strumming. All right, so I'm kind of wading uh, through deep water here to put a pun on that old song. Wading in deep uh, water here, trying to uh, tread water. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm treading water up here to where you know there's not a lot of room to do anything else but down here I'm a little more comfortable I can mess around so here's what I came up with okay uh, okay so to me that's a lot easier I don't have to go way down here come way back but it is tough it's taken me a while to get to and I still don't have it down perfectly this is uh, based on economy picking and this was the one that I thought, this sounds like Mike Riddle. Uh, it's very slow. It's not on the beat. It's a little off the beat. It's a little off time. But it catches up to itself by the end of the lick. Um, so let's go a little fast. Let's go back to that lick again. Listen to it. And I'll play along with it. And you should be able to hear it better. I'll try to hit it right. All right. And she told me, love a savior that would charge my destiny well now the misty veil it's lit so that's the lick okay so it kind of slows down it weaves in and out of it's kind of like a free time thing and here's how you play that this is a lot to do with picking now when I was first practicing this over and over I was doing this down up picking So I was ascending, and I found that it's going to be easier if I just do a economy picking or sweet picking. But you have to separate each note so they don't run into a chord. And the problem also that I ran into was when I lift off this finger here, my first finger had a tendency to flatten out so that I could bar that note. But when I do, you can hear this lift. If I just if I just play those two strings. It's really, it really is harsh against the rest of that chord. And so what I need to do is separate those notes. So the first the thing that I'm doing here is I'm outlining a D major chord, but I'm using a different inversion. Okay, so I have the... I have the third in the bottom, so that is the first inversion. Okay, so... And pardon me, we have allergies and all this, so I'll be sniffing all probably through this video. Okay, so now I've stressed this many times in my Bluegrass Guitar Essentials course about learning this D shape. It comes in handy in so many different ways. And for example, on this one, uh, we're going to outline this. First thing you need to do is learn to play this lick. Uh, it's just outlining a D chord. Now, what your first finger has to do is this motion right here. It's very difficult. It's tough to do, unless you're used to sweet picking. You want to separate each individual note. So it's like you're lifting when you're done playing. Now, if I'm going fast and I'm not thinking, I, I tend to bar this finger. Then you got a chord and it runs into each other, so you really need to separate those notes. Okay, so, and you, you heard that. So, what we're doing is um, to insert this into your own playing, it would be at a point to when you get to a D for at least, let's see how many measures that is. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two measures. Okay? that's two measures so if you have a point when you're going to D and it's kind of a slow song you can insert it there 
and um, it'll sound beautiful. So let's let's uh, think about this again. So we're we're practicing that uh, downstroke. So the easiest way to think of this shape is you're playing D, you remove the ring finger, put your second finger where the ring finger was on the B string. In this case, uh, third fret. Imagine there's you know the capo is the first fret right here. So th second, third, so you got these two fingers. See if you can see it a little bit better. I'm on the G second fret, B third fret. And then this finger goes up here and reaches for the fourth fret of the D string. We have to we have to make that sound too. So now I've noticed when I'm going faster, my finger tends to go down like that. And you're gonna hear that. So we really need to work on that first finger jumping over. And if you have to, leave this middle finger down until you can get that motion. You're going to hear it. But once you get it done, you can lift it because you're going to need it. Okay, and you're going to do that. Hold those two down. This is why this is so handy to have this, this shape because I can do other things while holding the, the main two notes of the D down. This uh, the fifth and the, and the root. And as far as the picking, as soon as you get down, that's a down stroke. Usually I'm just coming up down. Down, up, down, down. Okay, and then I'm just doing some downs there. Either that, that's the pinky at the, uh, this is actually holding the D shape, the pinky at the fifth fret, coming back. Okay. So I'm picking when I'm doing this, I'm hitting the G and the B, and then when I come down, I'm hitting the D and the G. I'm leaving this here though, in case I uh, strum a little past that. open G in the B string uh, to come back to the uh, let me some open notes. Now the other way you can do the that is lift off the first finger. But the problem is that that leaves that as kind of like a dissonant note. There's some, some tension there. And so if you like that then by all means keep it. up here okay so with me uh, one thing I'm thinking about doing is something like that a little trill type deal leaving the ring finger down or middle finger down okay so back to those but the problem with that is that doesn't start here. It starts here. So that's the tough part. That's got to be an upstroke. Up and then all downs. So that's tough to do. So if I was to try that. Destiny. And I did it without that. If I wanted to start on it down, my I could do that, but I still like the. So I like that better. So that is the first lick inspired by Mike Riddle. Now, this next one, I don't even know how I did it in the studio. I just recently figured it out today on how to do this. Okay, so the next lick 
Um, and I apologize if it's getting dim in here. I didn't think to turn the lights on in the daylight. It looks like it's getting a little lower, but I'll try to enhance the video later maybe. So the next lick, let's continue on. Uh, it actually is the last lick before we get to the course. So I'll continue playing it from where we left off just after that lick I just showed you. And I can plainly see the harbor And my mother standing on the banks And she's smiling to welcome me in Okay, let's go back to that. I know there's some background noise happening. I'll point when it happens. It kind of happens a little off the beat. On the banks And she's smiling to welcome me in Okay, so that lick is... Okay, let's see if I can do it. I'm surprised I got it that time. Let's see if I can do it with the actual song. So that you can hear it in context. So, that lick... goes back to the G. Now it's it's tough to remember that because my hand wants to go back to the C, but we're in the key of technically A, but in the G shape here, okay? So this is a really cool lick uh, I really enjoyed listening to, and I don't know how I even come up with it. It was just in the spur of the moment, I felt rushed, and it happened. It came out. But I'm telling you, I worked on this for like 30, 40 minutes earlier today, uh, to get the picking right. The picking is the toughest part, okay? So, here is, and if you're having problems with the picking on the last one, go back and watch uh, my video. Go back and watch the previous few minutes of this um, to get my picking. I didn't really go over that, but we're moving on here. So, the next lick is is uh, the chords of progression. Do, 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 do. Okay, so it follows the chord change of C to D back to G. Okay, so that is, we're going to start, we're going to hammer on to the second fret on the D string. This is all down, or this is down, up, down. Then I'm going to pull off, this is actually outlining a C. Or maybe uh, like a G suspended or something. Okay, so first we're moving in this direction. Now we're coming back the other direction. Okay. So hammer on, upstroke on G, B, pull off on the upstroke. Then another upstroke. I think it's uh, up. So you got uh, after that pull off, three upstrokes. Down. Okay, now this is where it gets tricky. And you're going to come back on the G up. Now, up to this point, we've been picking outside the string. In other words, on the top or the bottom of the string, not inside between two strings, okay? Out, out, uh, out, 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 that's an upstroke, that's out, out, out. We're gonna go out, and we're gonna be kind of trapped in between these two strings. It's two upstrokes in a row, it's a very small, Sweet pick, if you want to think of it that way. It's economy picking. And that's the, the key to this whole lick. Because you don't want to go out, out. And you'll throw the rest of it off. So let's try that again. the D string twice. Second fret pull off. Two open G and open D. 
and then up, that's important, so you can have a down on that B. Pull off on the D second fret, on the A third fret, finally ending on the A second fret. Third of the G to B note. Okay, so. Now, you've probably watched this hand. Pay attention to this hand. Slower. Just keep watching this hand. Okay, so let's play it with the song, and I'll do it slowly one more time so you guys can hear it and play it. So hopefully you guys are hearing that. I really do hope that you guys can hear that. When I play this back, I'll find out for sure. Okay, so one more time. I'll try to watch this with me. I'm not going to explain every move. So watch this hand, and then you can rewind it and watch this hand, okay? So that is the two licks inspired by Mike Riddle. That just reminded me of uh, him as well. And now that I've got it down, hopefully, now that I've got it on video, I can go back myself and remember how to do it if I ever need to retrain myself. But that is the key. That open, those two down strokes, or up strokes, is the key to getting that lick right. And also probably the three up strokes in a row. So this has been Eric Beatty for um, this video today on two leaks inspired by Mike Riddle that you can insert in your play. Um, as far as where to put that one, it's kind of a tough decision. Um, I kind of based it around some notes in the C because it's going to C and D at the same time. So I kind of had to just kind of wing it on that one. I don't know um, where exactly you would put that. Uh, but it's once again in D for two, two beats. It doesn't necessarily have to have a C, D, G. You could do that lick perfectly with just that G. It would still work. Um, waiting to flow into the chorus. So. Once again, this has been Eric Beatty. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been uh, a help to you, and, and uh, hopefully it's not too difficult for you to play these uh, licks. I think you'll find them very important in your playing. And if you'd like to learn more about picking techniques and little you know licks and feels and things, things like that, please check out www.bluegrassguitaressentials.com. And if you want uh, the DVD, it, the, the course is available in DVD and webisodes, so you can go... You could add a backslash DVDs at the end of that URL, www.bluegrassguitarcentrals.com slash DVDs. That has the option of both DVD or webisodes for this um, seven-disc course, okay? And it comes complete with uh, audio files, uh, examples, and um, complimentary ebooks uh, for that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I look forward to doing some more videos for you guys soon. Uh, just as they occur, hopefully we'll do some more lessons on some of those really awesome licks. 
in uh, the new album that we're coming out. Check that out at the Gilbert uh, thegilbertfam.com. That will be releasing soon, and it's called The Promise. So until the next time, guys, I'm signing off, and I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and God bless.